I don't recall which presentation it was today, and we had seen the Comey plan for about the 12th time. <laughs> but something I hadn't really paid attention to before was um, the fact that his plan said planner, landscape, architect. And you know this plan w was done in Boston in 1213, and it's. I hadn't really thought about this before, but here's Comey who has been in Boston in the time that Boston's Emerald Necklace has been completely built out. There is the mature design intent, and in 1912 is the year when they decide they're going to dam the Charles to create Charles Gate for the automobile. And so this is the backdrop, this friction of the automobile coming into Boston's Emerald Necklace. And one of the comments that this relates to, I think, at the end of the day today, which I planted a couple of seeds about um, the idea of communication and how and we communicate with others and how blessed we've been with, for example, the Rice Design Alliance who have been tweeting madly all day today and they have a broad and diverse audience of people that they're speaking to. And I think of Sheila, for example, the comment that she's just made at the end and I want to say, so Sheila, how many Instagram and tweets have you done today talking about how proud you are to be a landscape architect and to be in this august room of incredible people? And <laughs> you are right. Well done, touche. But I will leave you with something as, as a Washingtonian and this period that we were looking at um, of reclaiming cities um, when these iconic buildings were being built as a Washingtonian, um, this was a great period in Washington, D.C. when um, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis befriended people like John Cole Warnicke and we started resurrecting the city. And we did infill that was modern, that showed a dignity of restraint, that also allowed people to read the authentic without destroying what was there. And one of the products of that era was the Renwick. And the Renwick is now reopened. I don't know how many people have been there. But I will say that it's, for me as a person who loves contemporary art, who loves uh, design and historic preservation, that this is an astonishing experience. And it has happened because of Instagram. It has gone wild. The lines are along the, around the block every single day. And so as I look at this panel and I think of how blessed we've been to have Molly um, as a cheerleader and promoter for all of the work that landscape architects do, remember that the planning profession is the Adam's rib of landscape architects. They outnumber us four to one. There are 30,000 landscape architects in this world. And so the people that have a forum, the public and private sector, and the foundations, we need you to amplify our voice. We are just a little community of people. And so it starts with the Chronicle, but it goes into every single person in every community, and we have to find those people who are in fact the tastemakers in these communities um, to, to be here, to be part of the conversation, to, to contribute to it, and to then be part of a larger chorus. I want to thank our closing panel. I want to thank everyone for being such good sports about not having breaks today. But we <laughs> did have to leave this auditorium at 4.30, and we're behind schedule. Thank you all.